How's it going, everyone? It is Eric here from Boulder Road IO, and this video is a little tutorial on how to create a drop down in Protopie. So you can see this little drop down menu that pops up. Uh, there's some interaction where if I leave the actual container, it will shrink back and disappear. Um, you see the chevron flipping as well as these text box highlighting to indicate to the user. There's a lot going on here in this little component, um, and it took a little bit of time to figure out how to make this drop down menu disappear. So we're posting a video to help you guys out there. Um, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So I'm gonna push this project to the side. There is a protopie link in the description to this exact drop down menu if you wanna check it out. I'm gonna walk you through um, the high level of what we're trying to do here. If we go back to that preview, uh, there's three major parts to this. We need to make the drop down menu uh, expand uh, and disappear, and then give the user some interaction design indicators that, okay, I'm highlighting over these text boxes and have the drop down menu open. So let's jump into that. Now, we have here, the initial state is to have this drop down menu uh, height set to zero. So we have two containers here. One container wraps the whole height of the nav bar, as you can see. And within that, we have the company name to the left of the profile image. And then there's a chevron. This is an image. Um, and that's in the profile container. It's really important to put the second container that contains your drop down menu in the container um, that you initially clicked to open the drop down, and I'll explain that later. But within this drop down, we have five text fields, one rectangle divider that has a height of 11 for aesthetic appeal, and then there's two background items here. This is a square that's been orientated on its side by 45 degrees so that it looks like a more appealing menu. Um, and then there's this white background, radius of four and uh, a drop shadow. So that's all of the stuff in this drop down menu. Um, we're going to start here with the hover and click. Um, interaction that we need to bring this menu open. So let's come back here. On tap with the profile container, what you're going to want to do is scale the drop down menu and we're going to scale the height to 230. We're also going to add a condition here. Actually, we don't need that condition. And then um, for aesthetic appeal here, we are going to rotate that chevron, this one right here, by 180 degrees on the vertical. So rotate by 180 from origin. Oh, this is important. Um, the chevron here, you, you have to be careful when you look at the picture, make sure that the orientation is in the center. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is the origin or orientation. You wanna click the center box here um, so that it flips over the center. And you can see that here in this picture. So now let's, let's see what we have here. Um, I'm gonna set the initial height to zero so that we don't see it. So on tap of the profile container, we should see the drop down menu pop open and that chevron pops up to indicate that the drop down is active. Now we're going to work with the hover and in and out on this profile container to just enhance that user experience. So when we hover over the profile container, we're going to want to change the color here to, I just set this to white with a opacity of 20. Now we have that nice little hover over to indicate that, oh, great, you know, we got the, the color here. So um, then you notice that the menu doesn't close when we, we hover out and there's no way to close it yet. So on hover out of the profile container, what we're gonna wanna do here 
is scale the height of the drop down menu to zero. We're also going to want to rotate that chevron 180 degrees so that it goes back to state. So now you can see here, and this is the whole reason we put the drop down menu in the profile container because when I mouse out of the profile container, it will actually change and scale the height to zero. If I had left this menu outside of this container separately, what ends up happening is there's no way to actually access the menu because ProtoPy says, okay, well, you let you just left the profile container, which is a height of 40 here. So that's why we put the drop down in there. All right, so now that's working. Um, we have to add the last step here, which is changing the color back to zero fill on the profile container. So great. We have the tap to open up the menu, the mouse over to indicate to the user. So this is tap to open mouse over to show that the user has uh, highlighted something that he can click. And now we have the drop down menu with the mouse out to close the thing and reset the chevron. Actually, we got to reset it this way. Let's see if this is there we go, we got the chevron pointing in the right direction. So on tap, you want to flip it 180 vertically. Uh, and then flip it back. So notice how that's different. Now, the last part of this um, drop down menu here, if we go to the other preview, I'm going to close this. And this is the text highlights. So we're going to go ahead and get the text highlights here. Um, in your actual drop down menu, you're going to want to make sure that when you actually tap this, um, it will go to a specific page or trigger a certain action. So let's group these together. And this is going to be called the um, open close drop down. Great. Now, so let's go ahead and make this drop down fully open so we can see what we're doing. These text boxes expand the whole width of the background. I did that for simplicity sake on the hover. So what we're going to want to do is have a hover in and out. And we're going to select the first text layer here. So mail settings. Then what we're going to do is change the color fill to let's use the same blue of the background here. Let's try 15. And that's going to be color 15. And then that's going to go to zero on the hover out. So let's see what that looks like. Preview on mail settings. Oh, we, we did text instead of fill. Great. OK. And that's going to go to zero. All right. So now we see that this hover is working great. Um, so that's for the mail settings. Now we got to go ahead and copy this for the rest of the text boxes that are there. First is team settings. This is where it, it helps to actually organize your, um, your, 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 your layers here in the order it is, it appears. So let's duplicate that again for the account settings account settings, and then you're going to change the color of account settings, and then do the same for billing, 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 and the last one is the logout. Let's see if we got that right, not the divider, logout. Let's change the fill on the logout. All right, so let's check this to see if we got it. Now, it's important to note um, that on the, the dashboard, 
um, you would actually want to have on tap or some sort of trigger so that when you actually click this text box, it will route the user to the page that you want or trigger the action that you want with this drop down menu. I'm not doing that here because this is uh, the, the point of this tutorial is just to give you the main interaction design. Um, switching pages is, is quite easy to do. So we have the hovers working so that everything is working here. Um, now let's go ahead and minimize these guys and make this menu height zero so we can show the full interaction design that we have here. So we have the mouse in and outs on all the text. We have the tap on this profile container to open up the drop down menu, flip that chevron, and then we have the mouse out to close the menu, flip the chevron back, and scale the drop down menu to zero. So this is the complete interaction design that we have here, and it closes. So thanks again. Um, that was a quick tutorial on uh, the drop down menu. There is a link in the description with this exact protopie link. If you want to check it out, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to help you guys out. And uh, yeah, thank you again.